Get that round of applause going towards for this one. Yeah. This is big right here, man. This is humongous. This is gigantic. This is colossal. This is the bohemian. <laughs> this is the willy mammoth. Hey. Trust me <laughs> when I tell you this. <laughs> First off, we got a new segment that we do have to be. Yes, Mental Health Mondays All with right. David Weber. David Weber. David Weber is? A licensed mental health therapist and mm. um, just so happens to be the brother of someone who we... Not only did we appreciate what he was doing on the court, but then we found out he was a hip-hop head. Oh, my so gosh. So he became, like, <laughs> a super friend to us as well. He put out his own album. People yep. don't even realize that. Yep. <laughs> Crazy. I, I did. I remember when it came out. We was like, who could rap better, him or Kobe? Uh, <laughs> five-time All-Star player. Yep. Five-time ah! All-NBA 2001 first team, 1999, 2002, 2003 second team, 2013 NBA Rookie of the Year, 1994 ah, NBA All Rookie first team, um, ah, 1991 National High School Player of the Year, NBA Rebounding Champ in 99, ah, 2021. Ah, this man was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. I want to welcome him back to the show. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a stand-up individual, well-balanced, yep. intelligent, renaissance man. Mm. He is not being defined simply by his basketball play, but the other attributes that he has contributed to this society. I love this man. Yep. I want to welcome Chris Weber back to the show. Yeah. Citizen. Yeah. Citizen. Yeah. Come on, citizen. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? What's up? I love y'all. You love you too, family. Love you, man. Yes. Love you. Uh, you know what I first noticed? What is crazy is the brother dynamic between Chris and David. What do you mean? Who's the oldest, Chris? Huh? Yeah. I can tell. Cause David ain't said shit since he's been in the room. <laughs> and it's his segment. <laughs> David's the youngest out of four. That's what's really young. Wow, out of four. Yeah, uh, well, the youngest out. He's the, the boy. youngest boy out of four. My sister Rachel is the boss. She's the youngest. She's the youngest, but I'm the baby. You're the, the baby. baby. The baby. Happy belated birthday. His birthday Thank was yesterday. Yeah, that's Thank right, you. man. This Thank is you. it, huh? Appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This is interesting because, Chris, one of the, before we get into the book, by the way, this is an amazing book for what I've been able to scour through since you handed me the book. It's just everything from um, your grandmother being a, a, a granddaughter of an a enslaved person, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, wow. Your father was a sharecropper? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, as young as we are. Like, uh, <laughs> you want me to, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. go, Please. man. I'll come back to David. So, He's so, here all the time. This, is, this was crazy, and um, David and I, you know, talk about it, but uh, me being the oldest, you know, you get different parts of your parents' lives, you know? Yeah. And so one of the things, by God's grace, and I just think that's just, the wonderful current when we're down, when we need help, when we need a word, the angel God's, God puts in our lives, you know, just to get through the next step so yeah. that you can get on. So mm. in looking back and going home and researching everything, I went back to Tunica, Mississippi. Now, I knew my father was a sharecropper and growing up, but the stories and to go back to the plantation he was from, to see a field full of cotton, that's crazy for me to actually pick cotton was crazy. Mm. It was something I thought I was better than but then I wanted to see what it felt like. Uh -huh. I talked to my 98-year-old great aunt, mm -hmm. and she, this is true story. She said she had a baby on a Friday and had to pick 100 pounds of cotton on a Monday. Now, this, and she probably weighed 120 pounds, but this is not a story just for me. It's yeah. a story of, of everybody's ancestors and uh -huh. everything like that. And so the thing I learned, because I always wanted to know where did I get this attitude from, where I get the strength from, where I get this, and it's from God, but it's also knowing what your parents and your family went through. Mm -hmm. And so for me in the book, I talk about what I understand who I was on the court. I just want you to understand what I was being fed at home. And okay. hopefully that you'll yeah. see my perspective. I get that, I get that. As a sharecropper, there's rules to sharecropping. Like you, you, you're gonna sharecrop that land, but you can't own it. No. You, 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 uh, you can't see the books. No, they tell you it's going to be better next year. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? We're going to make more money next year. Just keep make, working hard. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. What are all the other rules? He couldn't He couldn't own land. He couldn't. So my father, so we went back and put a headstone on my grandmother's grave yeah. because uh, my father, uh, when he was 12 years old, his mother passed away. And so he had to watch five kids, believe it or not, for three years after that at the age of 12, age of 12 to 15. Uh -huh. Like he had to put, you know, kill the monsters under the bed, feed them, do all of that stuff. And so um, being on that property was was crazy, but he was telling me that 
the sharecropper paid for the funeral, you don't know how much it is, but you always paying them back. Do you, wow, you know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah. they're like the bank. Mm -hmm. where, where else do you get that reserve? So those are one of the rules on that. You get sick, you know, it's no store. You know what I mean? So the owner of the property gives it to you, and whatever price you have to pay back, and you know, you just may not know the books. But that was that was then, and for him not to be bitter, for him to have friends of all generations and races. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But it's 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 sad, but it's a blessing in that. His prayer was to have children and to move it forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. So him working at the auto factory for 30 years, him, you know, having five kids and things like that. You know, so to me, it was it's a it's it starts off really heavy, and hopefully at the end, you think like, man, I hope his ancestors are proud. They are yeah. because uh, I'm proud of you. Jeez, my God, <laughs> Grandma Bill Willie what, was Willie? yeah Bill. They called her they called her Bill, Bill but yeah. Will, Grandma Willie. Yeah, yeah. She was the granddaughter of a slave, yeah. enslaved person. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you meet her? Did you get to communicate with her? No. Okay. No, I got to communicate with her sister, the one okay. I was telling uh, you about. All right. That, um, mm -hmm. Was picking cotton. So no, I never got to communicate. She, Grandma Willie, uh, she died when my father was twelve. Okay. So no, I um, I never got. But I got to meet so many older people in our family, especially in the '80s, going back there and um, having family reunions and dance parties and things mm -hmm. like that. So. I, I was always fed, like you know what I mean. Yeah. People give me the, the the love, the women in our family uh -huh. tucking me in their folds, and you know, baby, you're gonna be good, and come over, you know what I mean. And yeah. so that love, even all the way up to the fab, even in in Michigan uh, and and the pros, like you take that with you. We are who our people are, you yeah. know what I mean, good yeah. or bad. Uh huh. You, you know what I mean. And being able to understand that and going home and and really understanding my father's life because when I played basketball, I had blinders on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. If people said something or if I'm focused, you know, I didn't even call home like I should. Because I'm like, I got a game. And if 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 I'm not focused on this, none of this all matters. But at that same time, I'm losing mm -hmm. touch with people and I'm losing kind of um, Relationships con a connection. connection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so as soon as I retired, I was able to really go back and focus and, and look for myself, find the truth, have some fun, and um, kind of just honor um honor the people that God put in my life. There you go, man. Chris Amen. Webber, this is amazing right here, man. Now we know where he got that attitude on the court from. Y'all wasn't going to be able to tell him shit. Yeah. Right? Right. His father was a sharecropper. Yeah. His grandmother was the yeah. granddaughter of slaves. Wow. What's, what's a call? What's a foul call to Chris Webber? What? <laughs> or a time I had to remind myself of that. And like, have our family, you know, it's a family of faith. And so, Mm -hmm. Talk about, you know, it's going to church and all that and, and being, you know, that kid. But even making it out of Detroit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or making it through Detroit, not out of Detroit, but, you know, kind of knowing that it's you against the world, kind of understand what it is. And you saw how our community changed, yeah. like, in the 80s. Yeah. Not many people remember, like, not many re people remember the, the hood mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? In the transition. And, and the transition. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so being a part of that and friends that uh, didn't make it that were murdered before my first basketball game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just by the grace of God, I'm here, man. So it's really a celebration and a reflection. It's a celebration. You know I just right? want people to know the makeup of Chris oh, yeah, Webber no. and David Webber. Like, yeah. I want them to know what's in y'all y'all DNA. Mike is from Michigan, Lansing, to be exact. And when he knew you guys were coming, he he changed his shirt for this, Chris. So. Oh, he had on green? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. No, he, he didn't have on green. He despises the green school. Oh, okay. No, oh, I'm oh. a Michigan man like you. Oh, okay. yeah. oh we together. Okay. 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 I was about to be some go funk go up in there. Go blue, baby. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just think with your story, it's just so incredible yeah. um, and what you're sharing. And I think it's all about having that constitution and really sway and Heather B. and Tracy just listening, Chris, to you tell the story. It was so indignant of like that great northern migration of so many blacks and really in particular so many black families in Detroit or in Lansing because we are the car capital of the world. And it's something about like the bedrock of that manufacturing industry that we come from that is such the glue to our families. That's how a lot of us got into middle income. That's how a lot of us yeah. raised the family and you guys come before children off of the back of that automotive industry. So really listening to you tell this story is so important for the story of the state of Michigan and too for the great uh, migration. Because black people, we do have our own immigrant tale, right? Inside of America, right? And moving north. And so it's very pointed that you're bringing that out. Thank you because uh, I talk about my big mama in in the book. And mm -hmm. anybody who knows a big mama, uh, she's related, but just think of all things that are good. Yeah. And so she really, 
brought my father through an opportunity and, and people saying it was jobs. She uh, was a hairdresser, so she followed the ladies who were following their men on the trail of work. So if it's Mississippi, it seems like it's Memphis, Chicago, Memphis, Michigan, you know, that whole Midwest. And, and one thing I didn't want to be was ashamed of the past. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Everybody writing real. the book. That's I real. started off this yeah. cool, I did this, yeah. you know what I mean? And I think it's more honoring telling the truth and then seeing where you came from, even the embarrassing moments. It, mm -hmm. it was hurtful and embarrassing to hear the stories of my father talking, you, you mm -hmm. know, and to be mm -hmm. like, you actually lived through that? You allowed that? Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, How, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. You put your head down when the, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so really embracing But he, he that. told you stories like that? He had to put his head down when somebody addressed him? Oh, yeah. That's one of the rules of, oh, yeah. Wow. We talked about it all the time. What do you like, mean? Put your head. Having to put his head down in Mississippi, Tunica, Mississippi, when a white person is walking, you put your head down. That's just something you know. He talked about his friends and people that he knew of that were that were lynched, unfortunately. Um, so he talked about all those things uh, and all the time. And growing up, this is you know, so we living in evil, living around evil. No, yeah. man, okay. he was. And, but he does. But he's not bitter. He, he really and, and that's that's the crazy part that that I admire about. Yeah. I was gonna say my father, but our father. Yeah. Um, still I, got that I, divide, I, yeah. 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 the brother sibling yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. my dad. No, <laughs> but um, but but he 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 doesn't hold bitter towards people at all. My father, his best friend is a hundred year old white man. <laughs> really? You know, yeah, one of his best friends. Yeah, yeah. He takes him to church every Sunday. Seriously. Wow. So my father doesn't hold wow. bitter towards uh, bitterness towards people. So to go through that, and not hold bitterness is incredible to me he held he held us accountable you know what i mean like he just held us accountable man he's a man's man and then growing up my mother the woman that you know he he chose to be his better half and the woman that that chose him you know i talk about just to jump a little bit ahead but when i talk about god's grace there were two situations i did not want to be a part of that was going to, to my high school so uh my father i get this opportunity to play for this high school country day but Jalen and I want to go to the same high school. You know, at 12 years old, we promise each other, you know, 12 years old. Damn, y'all been killed cool to that long? So I met Jalen. <laughs> so, you know, it's real good to come back to because out of, out of our beat, this was the only place that I ever said anything negative. You, you know what Where, I mean? Where, here? Here. On this show? On this show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. shit. No, 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 because I know that's your man. You know, that's yeah, yeah, your that's man, my, too, my, and yeah, you love him, too. I love you him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. I remember your response on the show, and Heather's response, like, oh, wait, well, uh oh God. Yeah, push yeah. the button. Ah, whatever, y'all. Yeah, 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 get yeah. him out of here. You don't know. No. <laughs> but, um, so we... Damn, that's crazy you brought so that. Yeah. So what's crazy is that we, we played together at the age of 12. I was on this team, and we played for this team called the Super Friends. Me and him hated each other the first day. I go back home, long story, I tell my father I'm not going back to practice. He's like, listen, son, you done committed this money. You're going back to practice. And, you know, he don't even got to yell. You know what I'm saying? He he has all this context from before. Like, we don't raise nobody to give up. After this one year, you have it. Make a long story short, I go back to the next practice. We're best friends from that day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kids. Yeah. And so my mother and his mother put us in different high schools. So I grew up in the same – Radius is him. We should have went to a school called Cooley. He went to Southwest, and that's where I want to go. I want to go to Country Day. My mother wants me to go there because of education. She's a teacher at the school at Mumford. You know, she mm -hmm. has students that are, unfortunately, you know, everything's happening at that school, and she wants me to go to this Country Day. And Country Day, the tuition costs more than my mother and father makes, right? Damn. Right. I don't want to go wow. here. There's a bunch of wow. these kids over here. I'm not going. I try to flunk out all this it don't work. <laughs> Just try to flunk. Oh, no, oh. I Damn. mean, like you I, failed at flunking. I failed at flunking. <laughs> what the hell? Because if I would have got bad grades, my mom wasn't gonna let me hoop. She was like, "This is the decision that I that I want you to be in." To make a long story short, that was the best decision ever. Wonderful time. Some of my best friends still go to school, and I mean, I'm still close Where's with. Mm -hmm. And Jalen and I still were best friends through high school, and we got to go to Michigan together, right? Yeah. And so just that experience of understanding your parents aren't your friends sometimes and that there's a bigger picture, picture. and a bigger purpose, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you jump years later to when I was traded from Washington to Sacramento. I don't remember that. I'm definitely not going. Uh -huh. I'm not going to Sacramento. <laughs> I'm not going. I don't care. Me and God could fight right now. Me and my parents could fight. I, I don't care. It's the worst moment of my life. And y'all telling me this is going to happen. So I called my daddy like, boy, you better go back in my day. I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to hear that right now. I already know that. That's, we ain't talking about back in the day. We talking about now. And then my, I called my mother and she was like, oh, 
God then gave you an opportunity, son. Wow. And I was like, oh. So mm-hmm. after I hung up, I didn't even want to speak to her for a little bit of yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I really realized that lesson is that you can't be too arrogant or too prideful for an opportunity. Mm. You know, with both of those times and wanting it. So that's what I mean about God's grace. I just had wonderful people to save me from myself at times that encouraged me. Mm. When I called the time out sway, I came home and um so I went to school, I'm depressed, blah, 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 blah. I come home, I'm just looking for peace, I'm on the block, having fun, we're all making fun of each other, getting mamas cooking and everything. And then after we have dinner, my mama comes in and she has a license plate and it says mm-hmm. time out. Now my mama's not a vanity person, like she won't even let me buy a car, like mm-hmm. she's not that person. And by her framing it like, baby, who cares about that time out? We're about to make a foundation, we're about to help these kids and let them know this is your worst moment and if this was your worst game and your worst moment, follow what he does next. But just think if I didn't have that and I had a wow. negative person like, wow. we can't never do nothing, man. And wow. you know what I mean, son? You know what I mean? And, the, and then a couple months after that, I'm the number one pick. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to the loudest screams and it was just Let's God's go. grace Praise throughout it. Amen. You know what I mean? It's just the blessing, Amen. right? Amen. Right. Amen. So it's just being Amen. thankful, man. Yeah, you know, if we get caught up uh, sometimes wow. maybe talking about rings, which we should because rings matter. Uh-huh. Even though I don't think you should chase rings. Rings, that's your, That's always been your thing, right? Yeah, because yeah, I don't think that means anything. Okay. But, you know, I think that if you can win a ring on your own, that's credible. Yeah. I think when you have to jump around or whatever. And so being in Sacramento was a, was a great time, and I'm just glad I had good people around. Time there. out. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Y'all yeah. made it into a positive thing. And Dave said I shouldn't. What's your theory on the on the? I was doing an interview. I interviewed David the other day about no, yeah. being the youngest brother. So after I called the timeout, let me just set this yeah, up. Yeah. After I called the timeout, I'm walking through the uh, tunnel, and I feel like this warm light come, mm. and I'm down, you know. And it's David because it was his birthday, oh. and he wow. didn't even know that. I mean, you, did you know? I didn't I, really know what happened. How uh-huh. old were you? I was that turned 13 that day. Oh, so uh-huh. it was April 5th, 31 years ago. Uh huh. Um and we didn't see Chris that often because he's at Michigan. Yeah. So, I mean, even though it's only a 45-minute drive, it's like he's yeah, a college student. Living his, his life. Thing, yeah. Living his life. And so I turned 13 that day. Also, too, <laughs> the 200 and something thousand dollars he supposedly got. I didn't even have a Michigan T-shirt. So if yeah. you had some money, you should have gave me you know, gave me a T-shirt. <laughs> <You're still laughs> what a that's little how, brother That's how ridiculous you. it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how ridiculous that 200. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. um, and um, Chris should not. I want to be clear. There's no, I don't want to start crying, but um, there's no way he should be in the Hall of Fame. There's no way. He called a timeout at 20 years old. He just turned 20. His birthday's in March, so he just turned 20. Mm. He called a timeout, and his life got better after. Amen. He That's became cool. a Hall of Fame, Hall of Famer after. Yeah. Right? So Chris's story is your story at home listening to this, right? Your, your your mom died of cancer, or maybe you lost a job you was with for 25 years, right? Or maybe you saw your best friend killed right in front of you, mm. right? And you got better after, right? It's mo- That doesn't happen most of the time. Most of the time when people have their hardest moments, that's it. That's it. That's it. Life is over. They're in the bed. They sleep all day. They're they're emotionally exhausted. They're hurting. They're in pain. They don't know how to get through the pain. Chris was supposed to develop an insanely negative coping skill. He was supposed to be a person that drank alcohol every day, all day. He was going to be a top five pick regardless, but he was supposed to develop an unhealthy coping skill and become a person that five, six years later, you say, what happened to Chris Weber? Yeah. Right? Mm. And, and you become a Hall of Famer after that? Wow. That's it. That to me is absolutely insane. So yeah. for you at home listening, Chris Weber's story is your story. You've had moments in your life that were extraordinarily difficult and you got better after. Yeah. That's incredible to me. So I'm Come really on, proud of Let's applaud him. this, Amen. man. This book right wow. here. Chris Weber is here. We're going to open up the phone lines. Yep. David Weber is here. <laughs> it's called By God's Grace, Chris Weber, 888-742-3345. Chris, give me some bars over this, man. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> 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 what way 
always pushing this Okay, way. all right, real love, real love. I'm going to give you time to think about it. Right, okay. I just want to plant that yeah, seed. Yeah, yeah. Now he's going to be sweating the whole interview. For real. <laughs> Come on, Chris, Chris Weber is here, man. He got a beautiful book by God's Grace. Yes. Uh, his brother David Weber is here, who's a member of our show now. He comes monthly, and the segment we do, Heather, is called? Mental Health Mondays. There it is. We got um, D on the line from Michigan. D, welcome to the show. Hey, D. Hey, how y'all doing? Excellent. I just wanted to congratulate you on your book, and I'm a hometown girl. I'm around your age, so I remember you. Uh, I didn't go to Country Day, but, you know, around the same time you was in the paper on the news and doing all that, doing your thing. But, yeah, keep up the good work. Thank you, D. I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. D, get the book, all right? I will. Okay. Yep. All right, D. That's you a citizen, D. Let's, wait Let's go morning. to Charles. Michigan is standing up right now. Usually they don't call. <laughs> Unless they got a win or something. Hey, they winning. They ain't hey. hating. Oh, man, like the Lions do. <laughs> the Lions doing something? The Lions, yeah, we back, baby. Yeah, we here. We ain't never been there. We Wait, when did, the Super, did the Super Bowl happen already? No, but, but wow, this year sweat. we about to win the Super Bowl. Oh, you ain't okay. seen what happened last year? Yeah, I saw who won. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, though. We got to, we got to start. You know, you got to start somewhere. I guess, I guess you got to, Chris. I mean, <laughs> reading your book, you always see the, 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 the glass half full. I right? <laughs> see what's going on here. There's a, a real... Um, well, hold up. Charles, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I got Charles on the line. Charles, go ahead. Peace, 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 everybody. I just want to say, uh, Chris, I played on the uh, 15 and under k Blues out of Kalamazoo the year that you played on the 14 under out of Detroit, and we went out to the uh, national tournament out in Seattle, man. I just want to say I'm glad to see you uh, went on and uh, did your thing in, in your career, and now you're in the Hall of Fame. Hey man, thank you. I remember that. Uh, that was Alan Henderson and them beat uh, beat us at the last second. Beat J Rose and a whole bunch of cats for the Super Friends. That was a fun trip, man. Seattle. Yeah, I played with a guy. You remember Mark White out of Battle Creek? I uh, do. Yeah, I played on that team out of uh, out of Kazoo. Uh, Walt Hall was the coach. So yeah. That's what's up, man. We all gonna get together and bring Michigan basketball back too in the state and in the D. That's what Derek Coleman and them are already doing. So, looking forward to linking up this summer, man, and bringing ball back to the Michigan to Michigan. Hey Charles, you should right. go out, look, watch, follow his moves, and then go where he go, and then tell him you met him on the show. He'll show you love. He a citizen. Sway in the morning. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> so you, Charles, Tracy T. <laughs> Yo, Chris, David, I'm so moved by everything y'all both have shared. So yeah. thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Um, you know, Chris, when you were talking about your ancestral line, right, it made me think about how a lot of people in this country are uncomfortable talking about the past, don't understand how the past can show up on a cellular level, the way that pain can be transferred. And I think it's incredible that your brother is a licensed therapist. And I was wondering, David, if you can speak about um, PTSD from hmm. slavery, PTSD from racial tensions and how one can heal themselves from that and also maybe how that healing showed up in your family particularly. That's a wonderful question. Um, so what they say it takes, what, seven years to get your credit cleaned up yeah. or whatever it's supposed to be? So what is it, what's the legacy of, of slavery? How many years does it take for that, right? So if, you're, if your child, right, had to endure watching their even they weren't in slavery had to endure watching their parent mm -hmm. and so whatever they learn about people about trauma about right there's no name for trauma by the way at that time they don't right. they don't use the word trauma mm -hmm. but then i pass that down to my child and i pass that down to, to the right and what's and, and and what is capable like what are you capable of doing so for like for our father to have a, a son make the nba yeah another son our, our brother's a lawyer like that's unhurt for him. Mm -hmm. He wasn't thinking about th those possibilities, M maybe hoping inside, but that wasn't something that was even possible for people who grew up in that generation. Right. They talk about slavery like it was so, so, so long ago. My father is still living. Like my parents been married fifty-two years. They're not. Wow. Wow. They still. That's, they're wow. still together. Still married. Man, they've been you know? through that. Yeah. But but grew up. Mom, in a leave time. him if you want to come move with us, though, Mom. Because <laughs> we want you to come stay with us. <laughs> 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 Come on, man. That's my dad won't let my mom come live with us. Yeah, yeah. But but they grew up in that time. Right? You wild for that. You wild. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were wrong. My bad. I'm rocking no. with your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they grew up in a different time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so my mom's biggest thing was education. Mm. 
she didn't know no other way. There wasn't no, you know, drop shipping and internet and you can make money, you know, with radio. We wasn't, they wasn't thinking about those things. So the reason they forced Chris to go to Country Day, my mom was thinking, okay, what's the best way out? I can't depend on basketball. The best way out is education. Mm-hmm. So I'm going I'm to pump every nickel we have in education. So we didn't have a bunch of clothes and cars. We had a, he had a, a red Corsica. <laughs> what year was that the Corsica you had? I don't know, but I used to drive it though. Like yeah. it was a <laughs> Like it was a band, yeah. 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 It's a Maybach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, had, we had the Scooby-Doo van for real. Wow. Like with the, wow. Yeah, that's what we, because my parents said, no matter, we not buying y'all nothing other than clothes, regular clothes, mm-hmm. food, and education. That's mm-hmm. it. So every wow. nickel went into that and that's why Chris was able to do TNT for as long as he did and broadcasting mm-hmm. and everything else is because they put him in an environment where he could develop those skills. So shout out yeah. to my mom and dad. And I, I would say too, um, I learned, like, I was so judgmental. Like, like a lot of times we'll be like, that generation could have showed us this and why'd they do this and that. And I would know. just hope everybody just thinks with a little bit of grace because, you know, laws. Just, just think about you know laws and the effect of laws can have, and the, the the effect that these are people that really did lose friends and family because of what the law stated, and there was no other way. And so, when I think of 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 everything, I think about the prayers they put into us. I think about the discipline of not being so emotional that they let it all go for something that maybe they couldn't change. Like, wow. what's the focus when you say, "I got to focus for ten years"? Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Just to get there. And so, I admire the strength. Of, of our ancestors, I admire the strength of, of anyone's ancestors that have gone through it, that have had to fight to find a place and that trauma exists. And and I know our generation is just working to get over the trauma, but while we're working to get over the trauma, I hope that we give grace to mm. what people were going through that yeah. kind of had to make up these mechanisms yeah. to, to they, make it. They taught us what they knew. Yeah. yeah. You know, you they didn't yeah. know more than that. They didn't know. So exactly. they taught us what they knew, and, and hopefully we took it to the next level, and hopefully we teach our kids. Chris and David Weber are here, man. This is like a This Is Your Life, Chris. We got Jeff on the line. Jeff, hey, what Jeff. you want to say? What up, Jeff? Oh, hey, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, bro. Oh, yeah, I'm actually from Michigan. Um, I just want to say, Chris, back in, I don't even know if you remember this, but in 1990, I was uh, one of the kids at the Super Friends basketball camp at West Hill High School. And I still remember to this day, I got a twin brother, and, like, you were our camp counselor for the week. I got a Polaroid of you, like, doing the dunk contest. Wow. And um, just something I always still remember. It's been almost 30-some years now, and I still can remember. I think you were, like, in 11th or 12th grade at the time at Country Day, and I still remember, like, watching you go to college and the Fab Five, and then you went to the NBA and just the NBA and the and um, and then, David, I believe, I, I work at General Motors, I'm an engineer, but I think you were working at GM, too, for a little bit there, and I still remember that, too. So, Jason, my, my, brother, my brother Jason worked there. Oh, Jason, yeah, sorry, Jason. Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry, 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 Jason. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. They so look just, alike. I always tell people. <laughs> 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 but it's crazy, I have another story, like Shane Battier was in, like, uh, ninth grade or tenth grade, and I was in a league in Pontiac playing on some, like, uh, just rec ball, and I remember him just really going to town on us but like i still remember shane and then yeah. you know chris was uh really big back then but just always good big big fan and just uh really love you guys and uh really I'm jeff so you guys jeff what's well. it, jeff what's it like knowing that you played alongside uh an nba hall of famer did you could you even alongside no what do you mean alongside oh, okay. he didn't play he didn't play you yeah no we must chris have been his camp counsel no okay. I oh, 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 <laughs> never mind jeff yeah. jeff thanks for your call you're a citizen get out of here <laughs> sway you can't, can't my question you know, sway, one thing like uh, when people like that call in it makes me feel good because they have a memory and yeah. so two memories i want to share with y'all one is the first job i ever got was from dennis Rodman. dennis Rodman. Yeah, this is crazy this is what i mean wow. so so Going to country day when there was a sophomore, you could go out to lunch. Did y'all have that same rule? No. We could leave for lunch. <laughs> we, probably, we probably messed that yeah, rule yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> so Dennis Rodman would always play video games at Tell 12 Mall. So me and the other. Was he in the league at the time? He was in the league. But everybody knew he would play video games okay. like around 1 o'clock. It was Dennis Rodman, you know. Who hey. was he playing for at that time? Was the he? Pistons. The Pistons. The Pistons, the Pistons. yeah. Okay. And, the, and it was out. Oh, okay, it my was, bad, Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already dogged the Lions. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just remember a stack of quarters on a, on a video game like Millipede or something. Something that, that I liked. Zach Zion or something that was off to the side and he was playing there. And he saw us watching them every day or whatever. And then like the fourth day. 
he was like, he was like, hey kid, um, come here. He was like, you want a job? I was like, yeah, I want a job. And he was like, come to my camp next week. And he gave me a phone number. He paid me three hundred dollars. But I remember just sitting mm. there watching him, like, like looking. Uh, at his physique, looking at how he worked out and things like that, and those little things, and then meeting John Sally, those were the little things John that gave John me. Sally. John those Sally. things gave me. Oh I mean, but they give you confidence, yeah. and that's why, yeah. like Sway, you speaking to a little kid, and everybody know how much you know, how much love you show, and Heather, how much mm -hmm. love you show me in the league, because me and you used to talk nightly yeah. when, we'll when talk. I was when I was going through it, and so. Wow. Um, yeah, th this is my brother. This is this is my brother. We've had spiritual conversations mm. where people probably didn't know what you were going through, and I always held them near and dear to my heart. That's not nothing I ever talk about. You know, it was always personal and private, mm. you know, and I respected our conversations, but so happy for you. And that's God's know. grace, like Amen. putting you in my life at that time. Like, how did we link up to talk about serious, Ser serious? I, I met Chris and Rashid Wallace on the same day. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm hanging out. She, I, 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 she, she. I'm, I'm in, I'm, wa I'm in Washington D.C. Hanging out, smoking, high as a light bill, and I'm just running around having fun. <laughs> Method Man was on stage. We just, and I come off stage, and and Chris and she was like Heather B. I was like, oh, what's up, y'all, my niggas? Like, my type of niggas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're in our 20s, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Hip hop yeah. is so fun, it's so lit, so live. Chris and she was like, oh, we gonna hook up. With? And we just, somehow, some way, the first phone call me and Chris had, we just, I don't know, it just got deep. deep. We just started talking, got yeah, deep. Yeah. And I was like, wow, and, and to your point, you just never know because people would think, Here's these NBA players. Every everything should be perfect in your life. I'm a rapper. Every you know all of this stuff. But it's we we we're people. People are people. People and are we people. go through things. And you know every single day. So I've always respected our conversation. You've been family. You're no. your family. No, that's how I feel. That's why when I listen to y'all in the morning, I'm like it's sincere. I mean, like oh, I, I mean it's it's straight. It's straight sincere. So that's, you have the most trusted brand because I know you guys are like this, whether yeah. it's the radio, whether it's not, whether it's been many years. You know, Oakland is, why are you talking? Oakland is the West Coast Detroit. <laughs> you want to talk about it? You want to Detroit. talk about it, Chris? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I, I don't know, but cousins, we, we question your loyalty sometimes <laughs> when it comes to Oakland, man. Oh, no, Matter of fact, I'm glad you brought this up because I got an Oakland oh, official not on oh, the line God. with me. Oh, yeah, I'm glad Lord, you brought this up, Chris. Oh, I feel like you owe the town. No, I love the town, man. Okay, I feel like you owe the town. We got Lord Rab on the line oh, from No Lord Vulture Rab. Podcast on the line. What up, Rab? Rab, Rab, thanks for hey. calling in. We got him. <laughs> we got him, Rab. I, I had to call in, man, because I got on black socks right now because of this man. <laughs> oh, boy, it was good. <laughs> now, Rab does No I, Vulture's I, podcast, the biggest um, podcast coming out of Northern California right now. And his family, so he, he, he good money. Oh, uh, so I'm gonna be okay, there next get, week in Sacramento. Come, 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 I'm gonna come do, see. Come see him, man. Yeah, Sit down yeah, with him, man. Right? I love him. I, yeah. I gotta pull up on you, man. I w I wanted to say this, Chris. You were such an inspiration to me and my friends. You know, on the basketball court every day, and we watch y'all in the Fab Five, and then getting drafted to the Warriors. Like I actually got to see you in the town riding around in that forerunner. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know, remember the forerunner. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and actually, my boy Grady. Was I don't know how. He oh, wow. Yeah, Grady, Grady know where the bodies are buried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no, in the book. I, <laughs> <laughs> I actually got the ride in Chris Webber forerunner. That's like one of my claim to fame, man, with my boy Grady back in the day. So, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for all of that, man. Thank you for what you did to the town and going behind the back on Barkley. We talked about that for two years. Man, th first of all, I'm, I want to come on the show. Second, I talk about going to Oakland. And so as soon as I get to um, to Oakland, I go to a party and rapping Forte there. Yeah. I ask him for his hat, and he signed the hat, uh -huh. and he give it to me. So I already knew that I was, like, welcome in Oakland. They showed me so much love. E-40, Sugar T, uh -huh. Click, uh, uh -huh. uh, Money B and them. So you got to realize I'm a rookie, Dave. Oh, you was, I'm yeah. a Money B. He can't, yeah, not, yeah. Money B, Digital Underground. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So shout out to Oakland and the love and the people, and it's always been about the people, and that's what – 
that's what makes me feel good. Hopefully, you know. Hopefully, everybody in Oakland know I love them as much as, as I got the love in return. Well, you needed we to say that. Definitely. We do now. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out GP. Shout out JK. Come on, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Foster. Uh, Antonio Davis. Oh, Antonio Davis. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Sh- yeah. Agent Zero. Yeah. yeah. Come Dame on. Dollar. Dame Dollar. Dame right. Dollar. I love the town. You got, come on, man. You got town in you. You are the town. town. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know. Right. Okay, we good. We cool now? Yeah, we cool. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Rab, thank you, Rab, for love media. Peace, Rab. Rab. Right. Rab, be safe, brother. Hi, Rab. All right, that's Lord Rab, No Vultures Podcast. I want to uh, ask you a couple of questions about the book. One of the things I... I feel like every basketball player got a Michael Jordan story, right? And you you post a picture of you and Michael in this book. Uh, can you share a Michael story that means something to you that that was very meaningful? Meeting Michael Jordan. So I played. Uh, I like to call them the crash test dummies. You know, the team that played against the Olympic team. It was yeah. supposed to be our year, and uh, we got a chance to play against Magic and and all these guys. And I just remember meeting Mike and how cool he was you mm-hmm. know what I mean we're all these college kids and we're practicing against the dream team before they go out against the world they didn't have to show us any love so the best memories I have about Mike is just him being normal going in his room and I think he was playing Jodeci and I called my boy I'm like Mike in here playing Jodeci what do you know about Jodeci you know what I mean just the just the just the just the little things but Mike Mike is a killer and that's what I remember on yeah. the court I remember getting off the bus and like uh in a, in a playoff game, and uh, he parked his Ferrari inside to intimidate everybody. So <laughs> you, when you get off the bus, the Ferrari's on one side, and you have to walk off the bus looking at his Ferrari. <laughs> so before the game, <laughs> hey, Juwan, I'm sorry about this, but before the game, it's the only time I think we ever let a teammate down. We can't, we get off the bus, and Juwan was real good friends with Jordan, <laughs> and Jordan's smoking a cigar before the game. He's like, yo, Juwan, where? Who checking me tonight? And we pointed at Calvin Chang. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't have did that. Sorry, Calvin. <laughs> and Mike had 55 that night. Oh, my God. Damn. <laughs> Yeah. And he smoked a cigar before yeah, the right. game. I remember in the, in the game, I, I told him, I was like, you sold your soul to the devil, dog. Like, you, shouldn't even be, you shouldn't even be making these shots he's making, man. But um, Jordan, he was just great, man, to be yeah. around that greatness. So that's, that's the only that's thing. That's the story you got. Yeah, you, that's, it. that's I, it. I say you're great. When you read this book, By God's Grace, mm-hmm. it's true. You're going to hear a lot of um, adversity uh, um, that his family, Chris, and his family have faced, and some personal adversities. And I... When I was reading a, a part of the book, you start talking about conception and Erica's struggle um, initially. Shout out to E, man. Yeah, having yeah, uh, conceiving a child, mm-hmm. right? And I've never read nothing like that. Like I, and you, you don't very often hear people. That's something we tuck underneath. We don't mm-hmm. talk about especially the, men, exactly. especially men, the Black inability men. Yeah. to have a child. You yeah. know, um, did when that was happening to you, what, what, what went through your mind? What, what did you think? It's funny because you spend so many years trying not to, you know, trying to stay focused in the game. You know what I mean? Trying not to get somebody pregnant. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. for real. And and so it was, it was, you know, God has a sense of humor. He's like, oh, you know, now you want to, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) And so, uh, man, you know, we just uh, prayed on it, worked on it, and uh, I I really try not to go in too much deep because I want that to be a story she tells but yeah. over you know seven years of trying we finally conceived you know what mm-hmm. I mean but it was her strength and now I got uh, twins, twins a boy and a girl they like an old married couple they six years old but yeah, they are like an old married couple depending on what day you know what I mean what you gonna get she's my little boss it's, it's, it's love like before I left my little brother my, my son is uh, practicing uh, John uh, Baptiste uh, um, yes, uh, piano. on uh, piano. Yeah, he's practicing uh, John name? Batiste. Uh, what's his name? Blackbird. Wow. You yeah. know, from really? Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying wow. this is, but that's because his mother plays, her grandmother plays the piano. Like that's, it's a blessing, man. Yeah, we tried many years to conceive, and then now we have six year old twins, and the house is live. Man. There you go. Anybody okay. got some kids? Let's get live. Let's get live. It's, did it's, you did kids you, parties at the house all the time? Did you personally though? Did you sit down? Did you do therapy, or how did you juggle with that yourself? Prayer, man. Prayer. You mm. know, I really didn't find out about therapy or embrace therapy um, until really David's journey. Okay. Because David is really, he's, David is really kind of downplaying, and that's probably one of his, I don't even know the right word, trick, I don't know the words you guys use, but uh, David broke Larry Bird's record. David scored, uh, David retired or 
his number's been retired. He's in the Central Michigan Hall of Fame. He broke down Marley's record. He was an All-American, All-Star. So This David? This David. I mean, I'm ah! talking about, yeah, I remember being in Sacramento watching the game, and he had 51, and they beat Purdue and me and Jay Will, White Chocolate, running around the house like little kids because – Dave give him that work. Since he was five years old, he'd be the kid in our huddle. Like, you better rebound, you better do this. So I've never seen anybody more focused or dedicated as an athlete, and I really mean this. And, and I want to take credit from that, but, but I can't. And so in sports, even with sports psychology and other things, there aren't too many people that have the education but also have the, the life context. So I hear a lot of people, maybe they repeat – mantras and things like that but David was faced with playing games and people like you're not your brother or um, uh, not getting recruited to certain schools because of um, some of the things I had been through and how they looked at the family or, mm -hmm. or, or things like that and so his career is incredible and so I never really understood it and David my little brother he's younger than me but at times he's a big brother and yeah. so mm -hmm. I've been able to really tap into wow. a lot of that you know through him Right. Oh, but, but you nice like that, mm. yeah. But oh, check this out. He used to sleep. He used to sleep in the bed with me till I was twelve. Oh man! <laughs> and he would pee on me every night so much that I I slept with a towel Yo. by the bed. I'm not lying. And he would pee. I just roll over the towel down and go back to sleep. Y'all are crazy. Oh, that's your therapist. Yeah, ask him about. Ask that's him about peeing thing. in the bed. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. Damn, David. Oh. You really was a good shoot. <laughs> wow, <swag. laughs> Oh man, yo, let me let me ask you this too. In the book, you're gonna find out that Chris Webber didn't really, I guess, appreciate what it was to be um, inducted into the Hall of Fame initially. Right? Is that true? I I couldn't. I didn't. I didn't know how to grasp it. Uh huh. You know what I mean? And I think that's what started the book. It was like um. What happens when you're done with something? You know what I mean? Mm. You almost have to keep score. It was like I needed in my mind to take score because it was so many shots fired on the side that, you know, I wanted to make sure it was it was the right it was, it was the right focus. And so my father laughed. It, it was almost like um, I just had to relive so many moments so that I could get to the end and say, okay, that's what I'm in there for. Because it was for a collective. It was over time for the times you go through people talking shit about you, the times they go through when people say you're not going to make it, the times that you're mad at yourself and you say, God, I'm sorry. Why do I keep doing this? The times you need to practice better and to focus. You know, all those things together, the time that people cheer for you and help you and, and root you on, you know, all of those things, the, the great people in Sacramento, how they put the jersey up, Vlade, these guys. So just playing with Jay Will. You know, I played with some of the best point guards in the game. Yeah. You think yeah. of AI, Jay, Jay, Jay Will, Will Rod Strickland. Oh, my God. Mike wow. Bibby, you, you know. Oh, and so, chocolate. Yeah, you know what I mean? So <laughs> just I just needed to sit with it. That's how, how does it feel now? Oh, it's, it's a blessing, bro. It, I, you know, it, it didn't take too long to get it. Oh, you know you got it, you got yeah, it. I got it. All I right. got it. I got okay, it. Yeah. Let, let me ask y'all this, too, real quick. Um, um, you guys have produced Nas, right? So you, this family is a family of hip hop. They come from the culture. So yeah. I can ask them questions and I ain't got to check their criteria. I know who oh, they man. are. Oh, All right. So we've been having this debate today about Kendrick Lamar, mm -hmm. J. Cole, and Drake. Kendrick fired off shots. Yeah. Drake has been firing little subliminals over the years. Him and Kendrick go back and forth. Yeah. Tracy made me aware that J. Cole has never said nothing about no. Kendrick until seven minute drill. We know that J. Cole has since apologized mm -hmm. for what he did by releasing that record and he's taken it off of all streaming platforms. Mm. You a hip hop head, what are your thoughts about the apology? <sighs> okay, so I was asking Royce about this the other day, Royce the Five You gonna put piece. it on Royce though, that's what you gonna do? <laughs> that's what and, and, I never wanted to see these. These are the only two rappers I never wanted to see beef in my life. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Only because I love Kendrick and I love J. Cole and J. Cole been murdering everybody on their own yeah. songs. Yeah. It's a homicide. And Seven Seven Minute didn't sound like it had his heart in it. You know mm. what I mean? Uh. To me. And so I'm, I'm going to go this way. I don't think it's the rules of hip hop. So within the rules of hip hop, I could see how people are disappointed. <laughs> However, though, I'm glad he didn't ride with it just to continue riding with it. Like, mm. to me, it's harder for him to say, my bad, I'm going to stick my chin out than to write another verse. 
I think it would be easier to write another verse. And so, truthfully, because I'm a fan, of, and I, I never met him, but I think I'm a fan of the man. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna put this on the man saying he he's wise, and it, it wasn't him ducking out. It, it, I don't think it's it him genuine. scared of a fight. I yeah. think it's him being like this this corny. We the greatest. Let's rock and not have a fake war. That's that's what I hope. Okay. All right. That's what I hope. That's what, that's. I promise you. So that's you what okay? I hope. So any. So you okay with the apology? Because of those reasons. That's fair enough. I'm I'm, not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm okay, but I would not. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I would not probably get at that that pass to others. Okay, so J. Cole get the apology pass because of the dynamic you just described. I see that. I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Because yeah, of what yeah. he said, he like he did do good work, uh-huh. he did do this and so, but I, I but I never wanted to see them go at it anyway. So maybe for me, I'm just glad that it wasn't. Okay. Because okay. we, didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't we didn't seen lyrical <laughs> wars. Like, Nas Woo-hoo. and Jay. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Jay, want... Jay apologized? His mother told him to. After Super Ugly, he did an apology. His mother told mm. him to. Right, see, you know what I mean? If, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. Don't a be scared fan. to answer these questions. No, Chris. no, no it's, it's, just, it's real. Swear in the morning, citizens. He ain't as nice as no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Okay, so let's come from a therapeutic place. Yeah. The apology. What is that overall? Vulnerability. A, I loved it. Okay. I loved it. Uh huh. I don't care what y'all think, what y'all say. Uh huh. I'm gonna be vulnerable in this moment, and I think that we shouldn't do this. I'm not gonna come back at you. Take it off the platforms. I loved it. I love vulnerability. Man. Okay. Yeah, that's your thing. You know, I love vulnerability. Yeah, that's, yeah. I love honesty. Yeah. 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 Okay. He did it at his concert too. I mean, he knew <laughs> uh, he was gonna take a. I I just think he thought about it. I don't think I don't think it was I don't think it was out of fear. Let me say that. And if you don't move out of fear, then I take it if he was scared and someone and he was right. scared of some lyrics that were coming, or just think of you think the lyrics should still come. What do you think Kendrick should do? Okay, in the rules of hip, Ken, Kendrick, let's, let's, let's Kendrick should still okay, come. Okay, let's stick to the rules of hip hop. Not, not Kendrick David's. should come. Let's right, not go right. to David's rules right. and <laughs> psychological right, behavioral right. patterns right. and right. let's stick to the rules of hip hop. No vulnerability. This is like, <laughs> right, right, right. No, 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 no. This is time to jump off the top rope. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, you know what I mean? If I'm if I'm Kendrick, you definitely have a, a moment, or you could put the sword to his neck and make the crowd scream, and then mercy. You know what I mean? Like I, it, it is time for hip hop, but uh, don't you ain't got a butt? Yeah, you, right. you, 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 just, you, you ain't got a butt. I, I would love for them two to get mad at somebody else and 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 go at someone else. Well, maybe they'll make music together out of this. David would love that. <laughs> <laughs> David would make an R&B album, David. <laughs> Yo, we got one more caller. Hold on. Mark, what's your question? Go ahead. What's, what's up, Mark? Mark? Hey, hey, what's going on, y'all? Hey, what up, Man, Mark? I'm a long-time listener. What's going on, Sway? I'm calling from North Carolina, but Chris, I tell these young cats, there's no conversation about my top ten without putting Chris Webber, and I put you in the same category with Isla Iverson because you two guys changed the culture. I was born in 75, so we're not that much the age difference, but you guys changed the culture by default. Y'all yep. just were being yourselves. Yep. And I respect your musical stuff, your, your, your style of fashion. And even though I'm a Duke fan, I ain't trying to be funny, I, I was mad when y'all lost to Carolina because I hate Carolina Tar Heels. But anyway, wow. but we... we <laughs> Yo, yo, so you got a question, Mark? <laughs> Mark, you got a question. No, I just want to give him big ups okay. because he's in my top ten. Okay. And see, these young guys don't know nothing. I'm glad he posterized Charles Barkley that time. Oh you know, he posterized Charles Barkley. And, I just, and he was a, the best Golden State team ever, Sway. The best Golden State team with Latrell Sprewell, Chris Mullen, and Tim Hardaway. Mm. But anyway, I just want to say, y'all need a podcast, man. You and your brother. I would pay for it. I would listen to it because y'all dropping knowledge, man. Yeah. That's and I almost yeah, mentioned one time to my cousin, Anzio yeah. Williams. There you go, Sway. But listen, I ain't going to hold y'all up because I know it's 12 o'clock. Okay. All right, about man. Hey, you you got tomorrow. a question, though, Mark? <laughs> no, I don't. I just okay. keep doing what you're doing, Chris. <laughs> okay, Peace, thank you, man. Mark. Hey, did y'all, did y'all beat the Dream Team? Yeah, yeah, we beat them for real. But let me ask you this question. Yeah. So let's just say, for instance, you're telling me, not you, but you're telling me that the theory is Michael Jordan sat on the side for three minutes, and that's why we beat them. Is that true? I, I don't. I don't know. I, I, he he could have sat on the side. Let's say he sat on the side all okay. twelve minutes. Okay. So you saying some college players beat the rest of the best players in the world? Yeah. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for people to say, oh, Jordan only played two minutes, that's like, first of all, saying that he's not competitive. Two, they're saying Magic is not good. Bird isn't good. Uh-huh. Uh, Barkley isn't good. David Malone Robinson. isn't good. David Robinson isn't wow. good. Mullen isn't good. You know, so. The story is that you, when they put the dream team together, that they brought you guys in to scrimmage with them? We were supposed to be the uh, Olympic dream team that oh, year because okay. it was college. It was always college players. They had mm-hmm. lost the year before, four yeah. years before. And so they said, we got this great idea. We're going to grow basketball. We're going to grow, you know, when Michael Jordan, the reason why we have Luka Doncic and these guys in the NBA today is because of that 1992 dream team. They went around in the world, That's saw true. them, and just like, oh, my God, I want to be them. Yeah. So we're the practice squad, and we beat them. But Coach K from Duke says that he noticed, he looked to the side, and he Chuck Daly was just doing this to get the guys competitive and because Michael Jordan was on the side. If I was Michael Jordan's teammate, I, that would be disrespect to me because no college team can beat an NBA team, uh-huh. period. I, uh-huh. I, don't, I don't care. And so, yeah, we won that practice. I mean – that was our moment. It was the perfect moment. Grant Hill wanted to be Jordan. I wanted to be Barkley. Uh, you know, um, Bobby Hurley wanted to be Stockton. And so we're in the middle of a dream, and we get to practice against our heroes. I mean, I'm in the right. huddle damn near crying, like, let's get it. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? We get yeah. to play. Yeah. This ain't the day where you get to see what Dominique is wearing, and mm-hmm. you get access on your phone to them. It wasn't none of that. It was like no one had ever seen it. They're wearing shoes and stuff that we've never seen before, the way they're practicing. So, yeah, we, we really beat them. Now, the next day, so we beat them. I'm talking about we beat them. We dunking on them. We wilding. We beat them. The next day, we did not score a point. Mm. You didn't score a point? We didn't score a point. <laughs> like, like, Chris, you, you're, you're as tall as the rim. How you not score a point? Not one point. Because Patrick Ewan was taller. Yeah, yeah not one right. point. And they really showed us. Like, it was physical. So did we catch them slipping? Yeah. But we caught them slipping. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But we ain't catch them slipping ever again. No one caught them slipping. Did, did Mike play the next day? Oh, yeah, he played. But he played that day we beat him, too. So. Oh, okay, okay, all right, Chris. Because it didn't sound like he was on the team <laughs> the day was, y'all yeah, beat him. Yeah, yeah, we, we beat him. Okay. He got that work. He got pictures, though? Huh? It's video. Okay, yeah. all right. Heather, you want to ask something well, in my class? You have had pictures. You never. Chris, I, two questions. Yeah. Was Michigan your first choice for school? And secondly, the caller mentioned you, Allen Iverson. This morning I was thinking about the Fab Five. I was thinking about Larry Johnson and that team with the UNLV running Rebels, what y'all did for the culture of it all, why we all, even women, started watching college basketball, young black girls because of the Fab Five, because of UNLV, Allen Iverson. This morning, we were talking about LSU and what Angel Reese, in our opinion, did for the culture of women basketball, now drawing young black girls to watch it. It's never been talked about so much except for this year. South Carolina, what Dawn Staley did with those Come girls on. yesterday, yeah. absolutely yeah. unbelievable. For the Third season. Yeah. Right. In- incredible. Do you think um, we do have a direct effect on – the, the the market and the influence the way you guys did I, I I feel like the Fab Five did that for college basketball the what LSU is doing as well in South Carolina we they basketball players have that effect yeah but like when me and she met you we were hip hop fans and we were happy to meet you knowing that you were going through the same things we were the mm-hmm. same age and working hard so I think that it was the Fab Five but it was also they hated us at Michigan after the game. We jump on the scores table and had them play uh, hip hop array. Uh, Naughty my name because we wanted to see what it felt yeah. like yeah. to be on stage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like Seriously, yeah. Like I, I, I say, this one of the things I'm proud of is that before our layup lines, I don't ever remember hearing hip hop music ever before wow. our layup lines. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was a pop song or other things, and so yeah, I think that. We were your brothers. We were people's sons. So, yeah, we had a connection. And what Angel Reese is going through, it, it hurts because we got death threats as well. You know, it's not all pretty. Yeah, so, really? at Michigan, oh, yeah. Basketball oh, games. At death Michigan, threats. death threats, y'all shorts are too long. And those black socks are ugly, you know. And so, Tattoos. what she's going through is being that leader and it's messed up. She, it's going to be lonely, but she's helping transition. With Al Iverson, I have a friend that always says, man, Al Iverson helped me because I can have braids at work. Come he on. never could have braids right, at right. work till AI right. came, Come and on. it's just that exposure. So, yeah, and shout out to Steph Curry because Steph Curry made it so I know more women's names in basketball than I do men's players. Why? Because we all could be at the barbershop talking shit. Yeah, I could play. And the girl could come out like, ain't no posting up, ain't no dunking. Let's go out here and see who can shoot better. 
Mm-hmm. And the yeah. fact that the three point shot has become the dunk in the game is so, so dope crazy. because yeah. that's what guys used to complain. Lower the rim. And girls like, man, lower the rim. Mm-hmm. Let's shoot. And so now you see the jump shot don't get old and she'll come in and 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 and, and bust your ass in the jump shooting contest and play. So Steph with Curry. The, with the Steph Curry. And what the ladies have done, like like playing tough, being themselves, you know, going at it, it's just wonderful to see. So yeah, the game yeah, is growing. It's growing. a direct result of them. It's a di- direct no, result. Twelve million, fifteen million viewers watching mm. female basketball. More than Game five of the of the championship last year. That's crazy. That's nuts. Mike, take us home, man. Being yeah. at you, Michigan. Wait, wait, I thought. was Michigan your first choice? Oh, I'm sorry. No, Michigan State was my <coughs> first choice. I talk about that in the book. Oh. That, but what's crazy is that I'll be quick. Is that uh, the athletic director's wife tried to set me up? She took a picture of me through a Coke bottle on a visit. And to make a long story short, I was like, y'all can't set me up to come here. I'm going to go play with my boy, Juwan and Jay. Wow. It's crazy. What yeah. set you crazy. up? Or how would that set you? Just but the picture itself would it imply that you was going there? Or? So I was at Minnesota, uh-huh. um, and the coach walked me up. And at the time, it was a violation to walk into a suite. Uh-huh. So they walked me into a suite. They're my host. I shake a couple people's hands. And someone was like, quick, 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 hurry up and get a picture. And I get back, and they're like, it's an NCAA violation. It's this and that. And so, oh. yeah, that's it's, it's, it's crazy how things start, you know what I yeah. mean? But Tom Izzo, at that time, I was definitely, you know, going there. But all those things, God's grace, I'm glad that happened. Because yeah. I got on the phone with Jay and Juwan and like, let's, let's do this. And that yeah. never would have happened. But because of that very first interview I did at 12 years old, I wanted to play at Michigan State. I got to go play with Magic at Michigan State. Right. And, and so that's where I wanted to go. Wow. Mike Muse, Michigan that, man. That's so interesting that you say that because Stanford was my first choice. And so you'll find a lot of Michigan people where Michigan may, especially if you lived in the state, mm-hmm. Michigan wasn't always our first choice. Sure. And that gravitational pull of Michigan State during that time period was huge because we had Magic, who was still very dominant in Lansing, and Tom Izzo, the Breslin Center was just popping. So Michigan State had a whole of basketball. So for that to happen and then you come and transform Michigan, as a Michigan man, I just wanted to say thank you. Like growing up thank watching you, you in Lansing, wow. Michigan, thank you, you were such that's inspiration dope. for thank me you, to man. want to be at Michigan. Michigan and so many other Thank black you, kids to go to Michigan and to be ourselves at Michigan, uh, which is something to, to underscore. But David, I want to come to you, though, but to underscore how hard it was for you guys. Michigan, to him to jump up on there and to do a hip hop parade at the University of Michigan, <laughs> I can't underscore what they were up against. Michigan is a very traditional school, yes. even to this day. Yes. When you mm-hmm. win, you only play the fight song, and then you go straight into our alma mater. There is no deviation from that to this day. So for these black men at that time to jump up on the scoreboard and to do hip hop array <laughs> is a violation <laughs> against everything <laughs> University of Michigan stands right. for since 1817. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, yeah. 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 yeah, we're found 1817. We're brainwashed. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, it's such an honor to talk to you, man. Thank you, brother. But Thank you. question for you, though, David. I want to keep on the LSU uh, right now just for a second. What do you think mentally those girls are going through the day they had to play Iowa? Mm. And that article had just come out from that horrible, yep. L- and I'm going to say horrible, horrible. that horrible, horrible. LA, LA Times, Times writer yeah. Yeah. who called them dirty debutantes. Yes. And the racism fired. they were ex- experiencing and how racialized that that had come. Talk to us about that mental capacity and how that mental capacity was actually on the court playing against them too as well. For sure. We talked about this on your podcast. Uh, when you have the world against you just because you're different, and what's different? She <laughs> has fun and, and runs up and down the court and does little stuff like this, but she's just having fun. And she's a she's young, she's young a young person. So when you watch adults talk bad about young people, mm-hmm. that's a grown man writing yep. an article about kids. Hmm. Yeah. Something got, something's wrong. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Dave the therapist no more. Now I'm just regular Dave. Something's wrong with you talking about and dogging young people. Young young women playing a game of basketball. And the same way they dog, they used to dog, they used to dog y'all. They used to dog the Fab Five because they had bald head and black socks. They were the big illest. Shorts. But they used to get dogged all but the that time love in the paper. The illest, that's the only thing that kept us going because we heard what they but, said. But but yeah. but but, for, but to answer your question, when adults do that and dog young people, like just because you're famous or have money doesn't mean you have a special capacity to handle criticism mm-hmm. or trauma. Mm-hmm. Like what? Because they make money or because of this, they can handle criticism better. No, like so for Andrew Reese, shout out to Andrew Reese yes. at LSU yep. and and all the women, all the women uh, in the sport doing their thing. To get criticism like that is unfair and it's wrong, and I'm not dating the therapist right now. That's wrong. It's yeah, flat out yeah. wrong, period, dogging young people like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, man, I want to thank the Weber family. Yeah, man. The Weber ancestors, <laughs> the grandmothers, the grandfathers, Amen. the fathers, the mothers, the uh-huh. aunties, the uncles, the cousins, the siblings, all of them. I want to thank you all. You are an amazing clan of individuals. Your thank tribe you. is is um, admirable at the very least thank to you. consider everything that you guys have endured and for you to be who you are today. Your ancestors are smiling on the two of you, speaking the way you are today and sharing Amen. this information and, and being vulnerable. And this is healing, you know. We, You know what we do up here. Yeah. We, we we song, we, we, we laugh, and but we cry, and we do everything in between, but it's for the healing. You know, so I appreciate your brother David for being consistent yes. and coming up here once a month. We're going to get this show on the road eventually, Heather. I keep saying that because yeah. I'm a manifest. Yeah, yeah, I see it Y'all happen. Y'all going to produce the show. Yeah, we're going to produce it. You want us to produce <laughs> me and Heather to produce the shit you out of you still putting me to work. Yeah, Heather, you're going to produce Somebody got to cook. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations wow. on this book, By God's Grace by Chris Weber. Yes, ChrisWeber.com. Okay, yes. go to ChrisWeber.com. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. book. Heather, beautiful I need cover. that cookbook, Heather. You don't got, you don't got, you're not signed up. You got, you got, you don't got nothing coming out. Oh man, you got to talk because okay. that's something I've been, I've, I've been saying You've for been two me years, for a long time. like two, three years. I've been wanting to call you and, and talk about that. Really? Yeah, I'm no, no BS because, we'll uh, uh, yeah, I'll be free. following you. You a chef? You need yep. a cookbook. Why wouldn't you have a cookbook? Yep. Why, why wouldn't you have a cookbook? Chris, you're asking there are a thousand questions, a thousand people done asked all yeah. Let's see if you let, get let, answered. Let, let us produce that. Let me produce your cookbook. <laughs> okay, I'll produce it with you. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> got a cook. No. I'm producing that. Many jobs you know what I mean? Sway want to have? How many jobs do you have? Man, I'm just having fun. That's all, <laughs> all the ones that are fun, you know. Hey, Heather. I want to apologize. My bad. <laughs> That's the way Chris like it. He likes when you apologize. That's his thing. <laughs> David. <laughs> no, Chris do too. Chris no. like <laughs> no, I just, man, I just like Cole, man. I love Cole. And, and, I love and, Cole. And, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, man. And Kendrick, yeah. man. Oh, you have your own publishing company. Yes. Yes, oh. because a lot of times, you know, as, uh, as athletes and, and uh, entertainers, I, I've seen a lot of uh, black and brown uh, men and women IP uh, be undervalued. And so I've taken a lot of athletes with me over this 12 years of writing and uh, kind of- Chris wrote every word of that book. I want them to empower themselves. Like a lot of athletes should just write their own book, put a team together and and empower yourself. And so I've shown some people and uh, have some athletes coming out soon. I have some parents, you know, think about the parents that raise these kids. You know, you talk about single mothers, the illest athletes, Alive, but been raised by single mothers. Single What's their story? I want to know by God grace their story. Like mm. for, you know, I, I, people we, they got to share it because it's somebody out there going through the exact same thing that just need a little bit of inspiration by seeing that you put it down. You know, yeah, yeah. so hopefully we can inspire that way. You know, telling our stories, man. Chris Weber, you got to love it, man. Get this man a big round Weber of applause, man. Swear right. universe, Come baby. On, you I'm a know, citizen. Baby. You a citizen. <laughs> it's a citizen. Come on, David. You an employee. <laughs> 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 wow, Sway.